Hey everyone, welcome to Airbnb for Beginners. I'm your super host, Jess, and I'm actually here doing a frequently asked questions video. So I'm here with Doc and he had some basic questions. I wanted to record this video and just post it for everyone who's going through the same thing. Maybe you're new to Airbnb hosting and you have some of the same questions. So these are the questions that we're going to be going over in today's video. Um, Doc, I'll let you, if you want to introduce yourself, you are more than welcome to. If not, we can just jump right in and start answering some of your questions. Well, thanks, Jess. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I know my name is Doc Williams, and I build out operations automations for businesses, and now we're getting into co-hosting and everything. And so Jess has so many great, insightful answers. So this has been great. So thank you so much for having me. Sure. <clears throat> Absolutely. It's good to at least be able to share. A lot of your questions were stuff that everybody else struggles with. Um, so I can start going through the list. Of course, Doc, if you have any other questions, feel free to kind of jump in. Um, something we were just talking about before the video was cleaning fees. This is like probably one of the most common questions <laughs> that I ever get. So let's just address it. Um, cleaning fee, and I'll show you my Airbnb as well. Cleaning fee, I would personally keep to $50 or less. Um, and the reason that is, is because when people go and they click on your listings um, and they're looking for a place to stay, it's not going to show them all the fees that are tacked on at the end. So if your property is reasonably priced and it's pretty competitive with the market, and they go in and they select their dates and they put the people and they read all the description. They basically spend a lot of time deciding your property, you know, yes or no, if it's going to work for them. Then at the end, when they go to book, that cleaning fee is going to be tacked on. So it might be kind of sticker shock if you're just a cleaning fee is a hundred bucks. And then also you have a lot of publicity around Airbnb cleaning fees and how outrageous they are. And my host made me do this, that, and the other, and they still charge the cleaning fee, you know. And so reputation-wise, I would just go keeping a very low cleaning fee. You can even put a $0 cleaning fee, $25, bucks, $50, bucks, um, something small, reasonable. Even if your property costs you more than that to clean, I would still kind of max it out at $50, bucks, just to keep basically – keep the client. Again, you don't want to shock them with anything super expensive at the very end, right before they book. Okay. That, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, d is that per, like per night? Does it change over time or is it just like, no That's, matter how long that they book, it's just one time fee? It's just a one time per stay per reservation. So whether they stay for a month um, or a week or a weekend, I just charge the same. It's all the same stuff that's going to need to be done. Um, and typically, if you have a cleaner, you're going to have a checklist for this as well. I know one of our other questions here is kind of about checklists. So if you have a cleaner, um, provide that cleaner with a checklist. This is all the stuff that needs to get done. That way they have some type of reference to go off of. Every property is going to be different. So just kind of helps streamline things. And this was your other question you had asked, the second one here. Um, you had said additional guest fees or uh, it's the settings to charge additional guest fees with each booking. So this is actually pretty hard to find. And I'll kind of show you back in here. A lot of times you're going to want to go to the listings, which is where it used to be, but you're never that's that additional fee is only accessible through your calendar. So calendar, click on your listing that you wanna change those fees on. Then you scroll to the very bottom, additional charges, fees, and then it's gonna be at the very bottom of that. So here's our cleaning fee. Again, I charge just the $50. Anything else after that? Now this kind of goes with your first question. Do you want to charge all these fees? Because you can. You can charge a pet fee, an extra guest fee, a management fee, I mean, a linen fee, all these different things. But Airbnb isn't going to put those fees in the cost of the reservation until that person checks out. So they're just going to see their nightly rate. Let's say your nightly rate is what mine is, right? 
a hundred or 150 bucks a night. Looks very affordable. Then they go to check out and they realize you've added on seven different fees that are probably going to make a big impact um, on their rate. So again, personal preference on that, but just be aware that those fees are all going to hit at once right before they check out. So it might just be more of like a deterrent. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, is it, um, I'm using Guesty as well. Mm -hmm. Do I still make all of the changes in Airbnb or these kind of things? Or do I have to do if, it again in Guesty? Mm -hmm. So if you have it in Guesty and you have your Airbnb linked up, then I would just go, everything go through Guesty. Um, because it's going to basically let you access all of this stuff. Gotcha. So there wouldn't be any reason to go into Airbnb or go into VRBO. Guesty is kind of like a management platform for all those where you might have your listing up on various platforms, but Guesty is the one that you actually log into and you change it and it's going to change it across the board through all your different platforms. Makes sense. Um, so it just keeps it easier. I guess the only thing I can think of is if you're finding yourself limited on Guesty, like maybe you don't have access to everything, then that might be something that's only Airbnb specific or VRBO or whatever platform. So you might have to go in there and manually do it. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. And then calls, gifts. So let's just go over calls. Um, you said, do I allow calls? or inquiries on the property. Um, I do. And that just, again, kind of goes to management style. The way I prefer to do it is to be very personable with my guests. So even if I never meet them in person, um, it's still me messaging them. It's still, you know, I give my intro mes message, let's say somebody makes a reservation. My introduction message has my personal phone number in there. So they can call me, they can text me anytime if they need something. That is more, I guess, accessible for me to handle something that might come up um, than them messaging me through the Airbnb app. So that's just what I do. Um, is, if they, and I know. try to answer their, um, their questions. I mean, I haven't really gotten a ton of inquiries about it, but you know, let, that someone would need to talk to me on the phone about, but if they do, and they're open to a phone call that not only helps me feel like, okay, they're a safe, you know, respectful <laughs> person who's going to treat my property well, but, um, also for them, I think a lot of, not just host but guests there's like that kind of safety aspect you know where am i staying whose house is it is it what the pictures look like is this host who they say they are or is this guest who they say they are so having a phone call or meeting them in person is just a good i think idea to do if you're maybe worried about the safety of either a guest you know or if they're worried about the safety of of themselves at your property that makes sense. Um, gifts for guests, I do. So, and this can be as personable as you want. I've done the whole thing where before a guest checks in, I'll ask their favorite snack or their favorite drink. That is, you know, not something that I do for every guest, I will say. So it's just, again, kind of depends on like how much you want to effort, how much effort you want to put in. If you want to go the extra mile, Doing things like this is going to get you great reviews because not every host does this and a lot of guests aren't used to having stuff like this. So if you are making it really personal and you're asking them, hey, let's, I want to make sure your stay is as good as it can get. What are some of your favorite snacks? You know, if it's, if a guy messages me and he's, you know, taking his wife out to a, an anniversary trip to Kansas City, that's something where it's a special occasion. So that's something that I would do it on. If it's something like they're just here for the Chiefs game, something like that, maybe not. <laughs> so just kind of, I guess, use your best judgment. Or if you want to do it for every guest, go for it. 
Um, the next question kind of follows along with that, a digital or physical map and menu for things to do. So um, I don't know if you've been getting questions like regarding that or like, let's say someone checks in, have you been getting a lot of questions as far as like, give me some guidelines of stuff to do? Yeah. And so we have two, di two different um, like properties. One's closer to like downtown. So some are like dinner and kind of like that. And then one is by like the CNO canal. So some people are asking for like routes because they're bikers and they're like, how, how can I get to this like path and everything like that? So very, two very different mm -hmm. use cases, but those are, uh, yeah, both get questions a lot. Okay. That's kind of the same thing I ran into. This is not something I did until like pretty recently, just because I was getting a lot of questions from guests as far as how long, you know, is the walk from this location down to the chief stadium? Can I walk there? Do I need to Uber? All that kind of stuff. Um, where is the closest Mexican restaurant? You know, you start to get those questions so often that I just decided to like make a little printout and I just put it in a book. So it's a physical copy that is kind of on the, <clears throat> the little like entryway table. Um, and it has all their property details. So I have my phone number, I have my contact information there. I have like common, um, popular places to eat. I have some route destinations as far as how far is it to Kansas City, to, you know, shopping areas, different things they might want to do. Um, for the property you mentioned, you might want to put some like biking information. It sounds like you get a lot of bikers visiting. Um, and then I also tell them like how far the walk is to the the chief stadium down here, because that's something a lot of people ask about. So I think with experience and understanding the types of questions that you get or why people are visiting, you can kind of curate your own list. And hopefully in, in my experience, it just made it easier because they already have access to all of that when they get there. And then there's a lot less questions that could come up just kind of makes their stay a little bit easier. Um, and, and just to kind of recap everything we've gone over, I'll, in the description of this video, I'll put together some stuff and I'll put it in the resources so you can go download it. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to have a checklist of all these things, then I'm happy to supply it. Um, next one, especially so checklist for a, or for a quick start guide to get your property listed and start getting reservations. So, um, this one is pretty important because I feel like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of new Airbnb hosts, they start going through the process and then they get a little sidetracked when it comes to creating their listing. Let's say they do get through the listing process. There are so many other things they need to do in, it, in order to start getting reservations. It's just like a kind of, I'll do that one day, I'll do that one day, and that one day never comes. <laughs> So, and you were asking me specifically about this as far as just having like a step, like a one, two, three, this is what I need to do. These are the the kind of checklist items I need to follow one after another. And that would streamline your process of not just getting set up, but getting people in your property as quickly as possible so you can start making money as a host. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was perfect timing today because like they um, were co-hosting. So like, the owner is like, go ahead, like, listen, listen, listen. I we did, and then um, today we forgot like body wash, like we forgot mm -hmm. we're in, and then it was scrambling, and we're like, okay, we've got to, right. you know, let the guests know. So yeah, exactly right. So yeah, so a checklist for, and again, I can put all this in the description, and let me add not just a checklist as far as what you need to do to. Um, get your property up and listed, but like a checklist as far as what your property needs to have would probably be helpful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even because it's like, it was like, we didn't want to go overboard, but then we we're like, what's the basic we should have? Like, okay. Room by room. Right. So like in the bedrooms, obviously we're going to have linens and stuff like that, but like, right. uh, should we have, mm -hmm. do we need an alarm clock? Do we need these things? <laughs> like, do we need to have, um, um, another one we had for our one of our listings, 
we had um we didn't have tea and coffee so they're oh. like and that was one of the things then um you know we bought a keurig and then we're right. like wait like but then we didn't buy any pods right so it's like well we should have just gone with the coffee and filter so like it just i think we overthought it and we we're over like going back and forth of pros and cons of what we should have in every room so like yeah just having a basic understanding of like this is what good hosts use or right. or have yeah like yeah. kind of a basic essentials list yes yes because right. i could have benefited from that like i didn't have a lot of this stuff when i started so mine was just basically figuring it out as i went along and i didn't have a coffee pot for over a year and then you start seeing like guest feedback. Obviously you want to keep like a five-star rating as a host. Well, then you see guest feedback of like, there was no coffee pot. Like, you know, to me, I don't drink coffee. So it was nothing. It wasn't something I ever thought of, but then to a lot of people, they do drink coffee. So they were like, why is, and then compared to other hosts, a lot of other hosts are going to have like some way to make coffee. Cause that's a big thing. So. Yeah, yeah, no, we were doing well. We had five stars, and one knocked us down with four stars because mm -hmm. we didn't have a coffee pot. And right. I was like, I didn't think, but I guess if you have a, yeah, it, even, it's that important. Even though it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to like rate to give you a low rating just for no coffee pot, like getting a low rating, as you know, can really hurt your like Airbnb stats, and it can be a process to get you back up. To five stars so if there's like a way an easy way to kind of skirt your way around and at least get you going on the right foot then yeah by all means <laughs> that also brings me to one more question i'll stop it, it's because and that the reason i asked about how much communication we should have with the uh with the guest because I'm co-hosting and I'm co-hosting with one other person because I'm doing more of the back end stuff mm -hmm. and he's doing more of the management. Um, he has no customer service and that's why I try to have him not respond to people right. in, yeah. re in real time. Um, but we were trying to figure out that balance of automated messages mm -hmm. uh, and how much communication, maybe just via text. So he will not be on the phone. Okay. Um, but also this last part, responding back to the feedback. Do mm -hmm. you respond back if it's not a five star? Do you try to explain what went wrong or you just say um, thank you for your feedback? I do. The, and the reason is, I think, again, just kind of goes back to more of a personal approach. So let's say I got a review where someone was... I don't know, upset about something, something wasn't to their liking. Think about how a corporation would respond to it, which is probably no response or like a very copy paste response. Yeah. But part of the thing with Airbnb is people aren't just renting your unique property. They're renting it from someone that is a person with your own background stuff going on. Like that's part of you know, I can't tell you how many people I've actually like gone out to coffee with that have stayed in my place. And you just get to know them. like it is. I like it because it is very personable. You can get to know your guests. The guests can get to know their host. Um, so I do. And it's not like, I mean, you can go back and give them a discount. Sure. Or give them some money back. But usually, unless it's something major, usually it's not going to be something that big. So let's say they do 4.5 stars instead of five because no coffee maker. I would just say, you know, thank you so much for your feedback. This is something that, you know, we're about to add or will be adding in the future just so they know, hey, I'm actually reading your feedback. It matters to me. Um, you know, sorry, my phone's going off in the background. <laughs> no, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I'll definitely we'll just, keep that in mind. I'll cut the video here and we'll pause it. So let's just wait. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My bad. No worries. Thank you for copy and paste or uh, cutting and editing in the video. Um, okay. 
so we can jump back into it. So let's, can't remember where we were at. We were kind of at a good stopping point, to be honest. Um, okay, so... Okay, so let me add that to the list as far as um, responding to reservations. Okay, now, um, again, I'm going to put a lot of this in the description for anyone watching, anyone who has the same questions. Um, and Doc, I know you and I will kind of schedule another time to get together again and answer a couple more of your questions. Um, was there anything else you had as far as today's video? No, I think this is great, great insights for what we need to do better and just feel more comfortable. So thank you so much. Of course, absolutely.